So I wanted to start studying how to handle the pawn structures that come out of the queen to d8 Scandi. Um, so I've been using a couple different resources for that. But as part of it, I wanted to try to just go look for some games um, and annotate them on my own and analyze them on my own and look for games that kind of um, exhibit key ideas in, in the structures that we tend to get in the queen to d8 Scandi. So the most common structure we get is this Karl, Karl Slav structure, which I have up on the screen. And as you can see, um, I'll probably do another video sometime kind of talking about it just more like at like a, just a structural level like this. But just to introduce the, the game that I'm going to go through, this is what structure we'll usually get is black. It's called the Karl Slav structure. It's one of the restraint structures. And basically, we try to hold this d4 point. So white's ideas are either try to attack us on the king side or to play d4 to d5 and get that pawn breakthrough. So we try to prevent that pawn break. But if every, all the pieces were to get traded off and we were to get into a situation like this, we're not losing or anything, but it's easier for white to play this end game than it is for us, just slightly. I mean, we just we just have to play accurately to hold the draw, and maybe um, I'll do a, a, some research on that and do a video at, on it at some point. And I, maybe I'll link to uh, I'll find a video and link to it in the in the video description. But because of that um, fact, we want to try to transform this pawn structure into a different pawn structure at some point during the game. And the most common way of doing that is to play for c5 we try to um get this c5 break in and you know you can imagine you know we would take back here and we have this four to three majority on the king side versus a three to two majority for white on on the queen side um that's the most common way that we're able to kind of transform that structure now ideally we would like to play the e5 pawn break but that's not possible as often, but it's something we should keep our eyes peeled for. And that's, I found a game um, between two Russian players, it kind of in a quick time control game, but the, the player uh, playing the black pieces was able to get the e5 pawn break in and, and beat a grandmaster. So I wanted to go through that game. Um, the other thing that can happen, the other transformation that can happen is sometimes as black, we can play our knight to d5, and often they'll have a bishop here, and they'll end up trading, and we transform into this pawn structure, which is different you know, than where we started. And so I also wanna look for some games, maybe some model games, um, to go through and analyze this structure here. But I wanted to start first with this structure. And so I'll be looking for some games where black plays the c5 break but i wanted to find uh start with the e5 break because that that's our ideal break it's just harder to get in because you know you can imagine normally we have a dark squared bishop on the a3 to f8 diagonal so it supports this break so it's just easier to get it in faster because we want to get it in sooner rather than later um so anyway i'm going to go through this game because what i liked is this international russian international master played a move order and set up his pieces the way that uh, GM Kolovich recommends in his simplest Scandinavian chess course. So I'll start going through that game. So this is how Kolovich recommends playing it, just c6 and then the quick bishop to f5. And um, so we, you know, Black, this Russian international master has followed it, you know, everything recommended by Jim Kolovich so far. And then here, I've had this come up in a couple of videos that I've done, but um, our structure is so solid, you know, at restricting the advancement uh, of d5, at least initially, that we kind of have the luxury to play h6. We have the time to do it more often than not. And um, that preserves this light squared bishop so that it doesn't get hunted down. 
um, we have a, like a hiding hole for it. And the other thing it does is it takes away it takes away this uh, g5 square for black's dark squared bishop. So now the Russian grandmaster um, plays this move knight to e2. And what he's doing is he's preparing c4 to try to get this pawn duo in the center. So um, the, the player playing black just continues on with the standard development. And now uh, the grandmaster gets in his c4 move. Um, now the consequence, and this is kind of in jest, but the consequence is he can play this move, but he can't move it back to c c3 later to support this d4 pawn. Um, so one strategy for black in these Cairo uh, structures, restraint structures, is to put pressure on this d4 pawn. So um, we just kind of move along here. And so now we have um, just the standard setup. And I'll put a link to a video where I kind of um, do a quick overview on this uh, repertoire, just playing with the simple, simple setup. And it's kind of following, so far it has followed all of um, GM Kolovich's recommendations in his course that's under 20 lines on chessable. I'll put a link to that too in the video description. But you know, um, sets up this, develops these pieces in this manner, develops the queen along the a5 to d8 diagonal. And what he's also doing here at, is he's applying pressure on that d4 pawn, which can no longer be protected by this c pawn. So white the grandmaster plays b3 and what he's doing is he's freeing up this his dark squared bishop to move you know it's no longer tied to the defense of of the b pawn so now we see this theme continuing by the by the black player where he's putting more pressure on d4 so the rook lines up with that pawn And so now black is pressuring this knight, which has the important role of exerting pressure on the center on d5 and on e4. So the elimination of white's knight on c3, um, that would be to black's advantage. So it would open up the e4 square for the light squared bishop to come here and contest white's light squared bishop um and it also the other thing it does is if we eliminate this one of white's key ideas and it's you know we always try to strive to prevent this is to play this d4 to d5 pawn break so that knight is supporting that break right now so if we were to get rid of that knight that makes it difficult more difficult for white to ever be able to achieve this d4 to d5 pawn break um, so this is where white kind of made the the game losing mistake I guess at this level but what it does is white has or black has this excellent shot playing knight to d3 and basically it forces this knight this knight's gonna have to come back to d2 to give cover to that uh, rook that's being attacked but that takes that knight away from exerting control over e4 and d5 and that's important and uh, we'll see we'll see this international master playing the black side um, execute and use the, those uh, that consequence and now this is the kind of the key moment he is able, black is able to, because of these changes um, on the board that took place in the center through this sequence, he's able to get in the e5 break. And like I said, that doesn't happen all that often, but um, 
we should keep our eyes peeled for it because if we can get it in, it's very powerful. So in the game, Black uh, played this move here and he's just basically kind of losing because now we probably don't need to flip through any more of this game. Um, Black just kind of mops him up, but um, it's just kind of no good moves for White. But um, one thing to know is when you play these breaks, whether it's e5 or c5, you want to make sure that you don't run into any tactical issues by white just kind of you know not taking your pawn um, and instead just pass, going past it and playing d5. So we should just look at that real quick. It is fine for us in this instance. We can just kind of play this move here, and you see we're putting, we're overwhelming that knight because we got it pinned to that rook. We'll be able to uh, be able to play this, round up this pawn. So it's just it's just basically winning. So the other move, um, instead of what White played, White played you know the losing move that, but. Um, the other move that they could have considered was this move, and we could either play, I guess a simple move would be queen to c7 and just, you know, putting enough uh, protection on that pawn once they capture it. The other interesting thing is, is we can even, because this e5 break is so powerful, we can even move our queen to b6 instead and rely on this pin. So, anyway, um, I wanted to start trying to find model games. This isn't one that I don't, I don't believe it's in any book. I found it on, on Chess Tempo. I was just kind of clicking through some games, um, trying to study a little bit about how to play these Karl Slav structures. And I'm looking for games where they have um, these E5 breaks. And I'm going to start looking for games where they have C5 breaks. And I'm going to start just um, analyzing the game and um, kind of collecting them as model games on how uh, we should play these restraint structures as black. And like I said, this e5 break is actually the preferred break that he gets in in the game. Uh, but it's less common that you'll be able to do that. More commonly, we will be able to play the, the c5 break. But um, I'm going to pull up some more games from this International Master and just kind of look at them because... Um, I thought this was a really good model game. Maybe he can be one of our kind of heroes that plays this uh, this system. What I liked is he played it from the exact uh, move order that Kolovich did. He let the guy basically get his d4, c4 pawn duo, and then he just dismantled it. So um, I thought it was an interesting game, and I, I hope you guys got something from that, anybody watching. And uh, I'm going to keep digging into it because... Um, uh, you know, I find this stuff interesting. Thanks. Bye.